Okay, first of all, I just want to ask you, what the heck are you doing here? All right, it is literally Black Friday right now at the time of this upload. You should be at thetimetellershop.com. I'm not kidding. The biggest sale of the year is going on. Here's the coupon code. What are you doing, guys? It's Black Friday. I hope there's still stuff over there because we sell out like every year. So guys, please go over there. Timetellershop.com. Don't miss out. So I've been doing a lot of soul searching recently. You know, with the past two years being as chaotic as they've been and with the holidays coming up and, um, it's, you know, time to reflect on everything we have and everything we've done and what we can do better. Now, I recognize that I'm often very critical of the watches that I talk about here on this channel and it might be time to make a change. Now, I'm not going to be less critical, but it might be time to step back and kind of flip the script a little bit. That's right, maybe it's time to look at things in a new light. So in the past few months, I've made numerous episodes about citizen watches. I've reviewed a couple, I've spoken about a few, and uh, you know, I actually really appreciate them. And I realized that I kind of wrote them off just because, I don't know, I, I guess I just didn't appreciate them as I should have. And this kind of opened a huge can of worms for me. I mean, what other watchmakers have I been overlooking? Which other watchmakers do I need to rediscover, Rado? It is 12.42 p.m. Let's get down to business. That's right guys, we're gonna be talking about Rado watches. Now founded in 1917 under the name Schlup & Co, the Swiss watchmaker didn't really take off until the 1950s, late 1950s in fact, with their Golden Horse uh, series. That's, that's one of their most famous offerings. In fact, in the modern era, Rado has released numerous reissues of these Golden Horse collection watches. And honestly, the more I look at these golden horses, the more I realize Rado has a lot to offer, okay? It's not just some of these kind of borderline fashion watches that are kind of ugly. These are really, really cool. In fact, there's no wonder that this is the collection that put Rado on the map way back when. Simple, legible dial, super sharp handset. You got some extra functionality with a date complication at the three o'clock, ETA movements beautiful beads of rice bracelets, and uh, two kissing seahorses adorning the dial right above the six o'clock. And you can actually find those same kissing seahorses on the clasp of some of their offerings. Here we have a sports watch from them, the Rado Cornell, and we have the little seahorses right here on the clasp. Very, very cool. So nowadays, being a Swatch Group watchmaker, uh, Rado does have some really great access to some really great sourceable movements, ETA. But with the good comes the bad, right? Like, you have the access to ETA and everything that comes with uh, those great movements, but then you're also subjected to Swatch Group and, and their confounding marketing habits. Like on one hand, I understand the path of least resistance, only putting resources towards marketing to an area that is most likely to buy your product. Pakistan, UK, these are like Rado's largest consumer demographics. So yeah, it makes sense that Swatch Group is marketing Rado more heavily over there. But on the other hand, I just wish that they would make a greater effort to market over here in the US because the truth is they're just not super popular. And I'm finding a bunch of watches I really do like, these reissues of the Golden Horse Collection, uh, the Captain Cook uh, High Tech Ceramic. That's a badass watch. In blue, that looks awesome. And if vintage is more of your thing, guess what? Rado has you covered there as well. The various horse collections, the old school sports watches, uh, like, you know, a Captain Cook or this Rado Cornell, or even really out there pieces like the Rado NCC 444. That is, Insane, but totally something I would wear actually. It's really cool. But looking closer at this ETA Rado that's on my wrist right now, we have a 35.7 millimeter case, all stainless steel, a 39.2 millimeter lug to lug, a 12.2 millimeter thickness, and beautiful applied indexes, an almost linen grain dial, 
and a day date complication. Now, let me tell you guys, this watch feels like surprisingly solid, especially for like the time that it was made in the 1970s. This is just a stunner of a sports watch. It's super duper wearable. It doesn't take up a huge amount of real estate on my wrist, but it's not like microscopic. It's just great and a great example of what Rado has been making for a long time. So in conclusion, all right, I'm doing my due diligence now, trying to right my wrongs. I have made a mistake by somewhat overlooking various watchmakers and, and Rado, guess what? I think you're special too. So the Captain Cook high-tech ceramics, the Golden Horse collection, uh, the vintage offerings, Rado, you're okay in my book. And we're gonna get a modern Captain Cook in for review here very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, there you have it. In the comment section, leave me a comment letting me know the best Rado in your opinion. Do you own any Rado watches and which one would be your favorite? Let me know there. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>